Hi guys, welcome to Code Bashers. Guys, in this video, I will be discussing latest cognizant interview experience. This interview happened today only. That is on 29th March 2022. So guys, make sure that you do not miss any part of this video and watch the video till the end. Guys, previously also in this channel, I have uploaded at least 22 videos for cognizant Gen C interview experiences. So if you are preparing for the interviews, I know the interviews are going on. Today was also the interview, and in coming week also there are interviews. So guys, please, if you are giving the interview, then kindly visit this playlist and watch every video that is present in this particular playlist because a lot of questions get repeated so that and you will get to know the pattern and the uh, type of the questions which are getting asked in the interviews. Guys, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe it as well as join our Telegram groups also. I am uh, the links of the Telegram groups are given in the description box and on Telegram groups as well as on this YouTube channel, I post regular updates on the different uh, questions that are asked in the companies as well as the hirings about the companies so guys now let's start this video and before starting the video please hit the like button as well as the subscribe button for this channel okay so as the date of the interview was 29th march 2022 that is today only the branch of my friend was csc the duration of the entire interview was 25 minutes the first question that was asked from him as we all know is a very common question is introduce yourself so guys, this is a very you can say very 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 important question as per the interview is concerned because lot of questions will be asked from the answers that you give for this particular question here what you can do you can talk about your internship your internship you can talk about your projects you can talk about your extracurricular activities if you are interested you can talk about what are your skills these all things you can talk about in this particular answer but do not say anything like do not say anything like be honest in this particular answer because many a times what will happen they will pick the questions from the answer that you will be giving in for this particular question so be honest and be true to the interviewer that but and tell about all the uh, positive things or you can say all the things in which you are comfortable in so i hope this particular question is clear to you and you will be answering it as per your preference so now moving to the next question next question was which language you are more comfortable with so my friend said that he is comfortable with java again okay uh, so the first question from java you can see here is what is the difference between method overlaid, oh, overloading and method overriding so guys first of all method overloading and method overriding at what point of time they ex uh, they happen so for method overloading method, method overloading is a compile time polymorphism what it means is that when the program is getting compiled then the method overloading part will get executed but method overriding is a runtime polymorphism that means when the program is, when the program is getting executed that is at the runtime only these particular changes for method overriding will be taking place so uh, let's just see with a simple example on what is method overloading and what is method overriding so let's just suppose we have a class name let's just suppose code so this is the class name now method overloading means that inside this class there will be different number of methods with the same name let's just suppose we take a, uh, a function name that is help. Now this particular function contains the argument as int a and int b. And another function is also present in this particular class that is help with the name of help only. But the argument that are present there is only one that is int a. So you here you can see that the name of the func uh, function inside a class is same. But the arguments that it is using are two different arguments. So this is known as uh, method overloading now what is method overriding let me just delete it and let's just see and you can see here in method overloading only one class is uh, one class is used that is inside this class only two different methods are there now let's just see about what is method overriding so let me just first delete it okay so in method overriding what we do just uh, just a second so in method overriding what we do let's just say we have a class name parent now we have a class name parent this is a class and inside this class we have a helper function that contains only one argument int a now next is uh, next class is that is next class is the child class now the name of the class is child but and it is uh, you can say it is inheriting the parent class also so you can say class child extends so sorry for my bad handwriting but uh, class child extends parent so this particular child class is extending the methods from the parent class and inside this also it uh, the child class also declares a helper method with the same argument that is int a here you can see the name of the uh, name and uh, number of arguments are same name of the function as well as the number of the arguments are same 
in both parent as well as the child class so now when we when we will make the object of the child class so let's just suppose we make the uh, object of the child class child a let's just suppose we make like this so now this when we will call a dot helper so the method of the child class will be called not the parent class it will the method of the child class will be called so this is known as method overriding so we have seen that in method overloading total one class was there inside one class or two different methods were there but in method overriding two different classes are there so this is the difference so you can see it occurs within the class where it is performed two classes with the help of inter inheritance so i hope now the method overloading and method overriding difference is clear to you now move on to the next question next question is what are access modifiers and name them so there are three different types of access modifiers public private and protected so guys for this particular particular answer i have made a separate video on my channel in which i have, which i have discussed each and every access modifier in detail with the help of real life example that how you will have to explain to the interviewer and i have also uh, in that video i have also coded for uh, i have also written the code for different access modifiers so you will be able to understand it better there so again i will give you the video link in the description box as well as in the i button so make sure to go ahead and watch that video okay so moving to the next question next question is what are interfaces so as an interface in java is a blueprint of a class it has stat it has static constants and abstract methods so what is an abstract method you will say so what we'll do we will just uh, define an uh, interface so how will we define interface in java so interfaces are only present in java not in c++ so interfaces then the uh, sorry interface uh, i'm really sorry for this error so interface then the name of the class let's just suppose the name of the class is code then again the brackets so this is how we define an interface and inside the interface you can see here it is written that it contains only abstract methods now what are abstract methods abstract methods are those methods in which only the name of the function is written and not the body of the function like we just take a name of the function as help here let's just take one argument int a now this is declared name of the function is declared but the body that what does what particular thing this function does is not declared this is known as an abstract method and in interfaces only abstract methods are present there can be multiple abstract methods that are present in a single interface so here like help is there uh, let's just suppose help one function is also there help two function is also there so multiple abstract methods are present in the interface and interface can only contain abstract method and no, no not the normal method so this is an interface now the what are the properties of interface in the interface first of all only abstract methods are used and using interfaces this is an important point using interfaces we can perform multiple inheritance multiple inheritance in java which is not possible which is not possible with the help of simple classes so this is the main difference between interfacing and or you can say classes that interfaces contains all the abstract methods and using uh, interfaces we can perform multiple inheritance in java so i hope this particular thing is clear to you and i hope you will be able to give the answer to the interviewer now moving to the next question what is the difference between constructors and methods so let's just first define two classes let's just suppose uh, let's just suppose uh, we define only single class uh, class name will be code and we are defining it and we have defined this class now what is the difference between constructor and method so constructor the name of the constructor will be same as the name of the class so this is an constructor that i have defined because the name of this method is similar to the name of the class this is an constructor and this is the method that is help uh, let's just suppose int a and we have defined the body here we can define we have defined the body here some particular code is written here some particular code is written here so the name of the uh, constructor is same as the name of the class and the name of the method is not as same as the class and one more thing now this let's just suppose this help method returns an integer so this is an return type so a constructor cannot have a return type so in there is no return type in constructor but there can be a return type in a normal method so i hope now two differences are clear to you uh, that the name of the constructor is should be same as that of the class whereas the name of the method should not be same as that uh, as that of the class uh, normal method can may or may not return a thing because there can be void functions also so normal method may or may not return a particular data type but constructor will never return a particular variable or a particular data type now the next difference between constructor uh, constructor method is that 
that like we have just made a object of this class so code c is equal to let's just suppose new code now we have made an object of this class so what will happen the constructor will be called automatically when we are making the object of this class the constructor will be called automatically but the method how when the method will call when we will call it by ourselves that is c that is the name of the object dot help and we pass an argument let's just suppose one so this is a difference also that whenever an object is declared the constructor is called automatically but for a simple method we will have to call the uh, method by the object by ourselves so i hope now the difference between constructors and methods are also clear to you okay now next question is what do you mean by jdbc so jdbc is nothing but jdbc is a java api to connect and execute the queries with the database so if your backend code is written in java and you want to uh, you can say update select or anything you have to do with the databases you have to like you have uh, uh, made a form and in that there is an information where uh, in the backend java is used and now you will have to store that information inside the database so then we will use a jdbc api so this is what a jdbc is so i hope this question is also clear to you now moving to the next question there is different types of joins and explain so again guys this is a very important question as per interviews because this question gets repeated most of the time and uh, there are uh, now i will be explaining the question there are total four types of joins one is inner join you can see here if two tables are joined so those uh, those rows which are common in both the table they will come in the result set next is left join so whenever two tables are joined on the basis of left join those rows which are common in both the tables will be coming plus the rows that are present in the left table and not in the right table will be coming right join is opposite of left join the table uh, first of all inner rows will be coming that is that are common in both the tables and in right join the table that is in the right and the rows that are present in the right table which are not present in the left table will also come and what is full join full join is left join plus right join so you can see by this venn diagram also so the common rows are also coming the rows which are present in the right table but not in the left table are also coming and the rows which are present in the left table and not in the right tables are also coming so i hope this particular question is also clear to you and guys do prepare this question very well because it is a very important question as per interviews concerned next question is tell me about your strengths and weaknesses so guys uh, many of you what you do you simply uh, tell you about your strengths to the interviewer and you say that i do not have any weakness and this is a very bad point as con uh, that will be considered in an interview you will have to tell at least two of your strengths and at least two of your weaknesses so two to each you have to prepare that why this is my strength and why this is my strength how in real life i know that this is my strength what are the examples that or experiences by which you know that this is my strength and what are the uh, what are the experiences of your life that this is your weakness so by this you will have to prepare at least two of your strengths and two of your weaknesses so i hope this question is also clear to you and guys if you have not subscribed to this channel till now please subscribe it because many more such videos will be coming in future and i am uh, making a lot of effort in making such videos so thank you for watching this video and now moving to the next question that is the last question of this uh, interview that is do you have any other offers in hand now so guys again it is a very tricky question it, it it can be a make or break situation because if you will say yes they will ask the package and uh, they will do they won't ask the package but they can say that if the other company is giving you more then will you join our company so again this these type of questions become little tricky so uh, you can say no also that no i do not have any offers in hand now so that won't be any problem so it is dependent on you that which answer you will be given so these are all the questions that were asked from this candidate in this interview i hope this uh, video will help you in preparing for your interviews and guys if you want more such videos please subscribe the channel please go through this playlist the link you will find in the description box or in the i button and guys in future also i will be keep on posting such videos so guys thank you for watching this video